Hello Royal folks, it's good to see you all here again. This is your regular dose of Royal News and Analysis, but before we start, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon. Thanks. Harry and Meghan clearly believe they're the most important people in the world. Imagine after doing more to trash the royal family's reputation than even the disgraced Prince Andrew, expecting your children to get a gig at the King's coronation, and that invitation is not enough. They too must be on the palace balcony, front and centre among the action they so ungraciously turned their back on three years ago. This carry-on is no real surprise from the ginger and the winger. Their rampant victim mentality has become not just an ailment, but their entire personalities. Victimhood gives them importance, a reason to be listened to, and it also happens to make them a lot of money. Once you establish yourself as a victim, you grant yourself a get-out-of-jail-free card. Anyone who dares criticize you in it is a nasty piece of work. You can't lose. Well, you can lose. You lose friends and family as everyone around you realizes just how insufferable you are. But again, you justify that to yourself as their weakness and mean-spirited nature and not your own. What sort of bloke live streams his own therapy sessions and charges people for the privilege of watching? But as much as I deride Harry and Meghan for their behavior, we must understand that this is a much broader cultural phenomenon. One, they have managed to turn into a profit-making venture and, more dangerously, promote to young people as legitimate. The era of social media has given people instant validation. So they are taking their gripes about their lives and their childhoods and how nothing has ever gone their way to the world and people to make them feel sorry for them without offering any constructive advice or criticism. And so begins the cycle of victimhood. Large numbers of young people, many have grew up with a lot of money and opportunity, now claim to have suffered trauma that explains their own faults when the worst trauma they ever experienced was to find a cheese sandwich in their school box instead of peanut butter. This supposed trauma must be validated and accepted, and more than that, you must be compensated in some way. Which brings us back to the palace balcony. A spot on that balcony is reserved for working royals, a requirement of which Harry and Meghan would be well aware. They left that life of their own volition, but they believe that all alleged horridness the firm portrayed upon them means they deserve, despite all the pain they have themselves inflicted upon the royal family, to be compensated with a berth on the balcony. It would for them be a validation, an admission of wrongdoing. This is narcissism, social media has amplified and encouraged. Harry and Meghan's worldwide privacy tour, as South Park so aptly coined it, has only demonstrated to some that they should do the same. There is no need to look inward and seek self-improvement at a time when everyone, including people you don't know, from a bar of soap, tell you that you are right to feel wronged. I used to think nothing came of wallowing in self-pity. Harry and Meghan have proven me wrong. It can be extremely profitable. But the average TikToker consumed by victimhood will never be able to turn a dime off their complaints. These two are pushing a dangerous cultural phenomenon that will only consign young people to a life of even more misery. God help those who help themselves, not those who whinge on social media. We hope you guys enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time for more raw news and analysis.